how to activate the power of God when you pray. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 14. Matthew 14, 25 to 31. The Bible says, In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spake to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come on thee unto the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? Peter was one of those disciples that was hungry to walk in the power of God. He saw the lifestyle of Jesus. He saw the supernatural at work in a natural man's life. Amen. He was desperate for it. He was thirsty for it. So he immediately he knew that it was Jesus that was walking on water. What He showed his desire. He said, Lord, I want to do what you're doing. Bid me come. And as soon as Jesus heard him, Jesus did not give him any manual. He didn't give him any prescription or long procedures on how to walk on water. Jesus just said, come. Guess what? Peter immediately jumped out of the boat and began walking on water. Now, when God speaks to you, when God talks to you, or gives you an instruction, or tells you to do something, the minute you obey, it's always easier to act out in faith when you obey God immediately. The time gap between the minute God spoke to you and the point where you begin to obey God, or when you step out to obey God, if you leave enough room for the enemy, he will choke that word. Your flesh will come into play. Your spirit, your flesh, your, your head will start to rationalize that instruction. The reason Peter was able to walk on water, immediately Jesus said come, was because he obeyed Jesus immediately. Delayed obedience always leads to disobedience. You know why? Because we give it so much time for Satan to actually come and attack and choke the word. For instance, you're in a meeting and you're ministering. You're a minister of God and you're ministering to people. And God says, he points out to a lady sitting in the crowd. That lady has cancer. I want to heal her today. Call her out. If you don't act on that instruction immediately and you allow that word get to your head, your flesh will begin to process it. You start to rationalize that instruction. That's when you look at the lady. She doesn't look sick. She looks healthy to me. What if I call her and she says she doesn't have cancer? What if I call her out and nothing happens? Delayed obedience always leads to disobedience. Eventually, you might never call that lady out. Was the power of God present to heal that woman in that meeting? Yes, it was. But what happened? You didn't activate it. You didn't activate it by acting on that instruction immediately. Timeliness is very important to activating the power of God in our lives. I notice sometimes when, I, when God is asking me to sow a seed or God is asking me to give something to someone, when I delay that instruction, I end up not doing it or I end up doing it grudgingly. What's the use? The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. But when you act on it immediately, while that word is still burning in your heart, because when God speaks, he speaks to your heart, not your head. When you act on it immediately, power is activated. The power of God is activated and immediately miracles happen. That's how to activate the power of God when you pray. Do you receive some instructions when you pray? You notice God speaks to us. Prayer is a two-way communication. It's not one way. So when you're talking to God, he's saying something. He's ministering back to you. When you study the word, God is actually ministering to you, speaking to you. When you delay in obeying the word of God or an instruction, God spoke to your heart directly. You end up disobeying him. 
you delay the activation of the power of God. The power comes with the word. When God speaks to you, his word is power. But that word, that power remains on, um, I don't know the word, that power remains on, it just remains there until you activate it. Your obedience, prompt obedience to an instruction that God gives you activates the power of God in that direction. Prompt obedience to an instruction that God gives you activates the power of God in that direction. Many times we slow it down. Look at what happened to Peter. Peter was already walking on water. Guess what? He began to process what he was doing. You know, sometimes we're already in the middle of obeying God. Then we switch to flesh mode. You began in the spirit and then you want to finish in the flesh. That's what happened to Peter. Peter was walking on water by faith. And then all of a sudden, he started, he took his eyes off Jesus and began to observe what he was doing. I'm actually walking on water. This is a miracle. How is this possible? And the minute he took his eyes off Jesus to what he was doing, to that experience he was having, he noticed the wind, he noticed the storm, he noticed that his friends were still in the boat. Those that were playing safe were still in the boat. And what happened? Fear kicked in, doubt kicked in. Immediately he began to sink. He began to sink. The minute you take your eyes off the word and you begin to notice, pay attention, consider your environment, your physical environment, you're going to start sinking. Peter was sinking on the very ground that he was walking on. Why? He took his gaze off Jesus. He took his gaze off Jesus. You activate the power of God when you start in the spirit and you stay in the spirit and you finish in the spirit. When you start in the spirit, you stay in the spirit, you finish in the spirit. I, I'm not saying don't think. You might be saying, are you telling me not to use my head? Yes, I'm telling you not to use your head. When it comes to the things of the spirit, the head, your head will not get anywhere with God. Don't use your head. Use your faith. Use the word. Stand on the word. I was in church recently, first Sunday of this year, and just as about, I was about to give my offering, I heard the Holy Spirit um, correct me, or should I use chastise me, on what I was about to do. He said to me, you can do better than that. You know, sometimes when you do things for God over and over again, you start to get casual with it. We go to church all, every Sunday or every other day. And so we don't take note of our offering. We just put the offering in the offering basket. Whatever you have is what you will give. But the Holy Spirit started talking to me about being deliberate about my offering, not just my tithe, not just my seeds, but even my offerings. And I addressed myself immediately. I had a check in my spirit. So the amount I pledged to start giving as an offering for the year, I literally multiplied it by five. Five times my normal offering. Now, the minute I opened my bank app to transfer that money, the power of God went with what I was doing. The, my faith was activated. The power of God was activated to meet that commitment that I made, right? To make sure that that commitment remains consistent, remains easy for me to be, um, to be consistent with, right? Now, two Sundays after, here am I in church. It's time for offering. And I open my bank up. And just as I was about to, you know, key in the numbers, the figures, I delayed. I started to think of what I needed money to do, what I needed money for that day. I started to think of all the challenges and all the bills I had not paid. I delayed in obeying that instruction. Instantly, I knew what the enemy was doing. He wanted to steal that word. He wanted to choke that word because that's what he does. And I changed my mood. I switched back to faith. I said, you know what, God, you come first. God is aware of your situation. Was Jesus not aware that the wind was boisterous? He knew that the wind was contrary. He knew that there was a storm. Yet, regardless of that, he said, Peter, come. 
walk on water with me. But the minute Peter began to consider, the minute Peter began to observe, the minute he began to observe the wind and all of that, he started to sink. So when I started to think of my bills and think of the things I had not yet done, I was close to not giving that offering. I was close to rethinking it. I was close to reducing it. Delayed obedience, like I said earlier, often leads to disobedience. Amen. Let's look at um, let's look at um, Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. It's usually easier to use my phone anyway. Matthew 12. Verse 10, it says, And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Then said Jesus to the man, Stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Jesus told a man who had only one hand to stretch forth his hand. Was Jesus not aware? that his hand had withered. He was well aware of it. But yet, what did he say? Stretch it. If the man had processed that information that Jesus gave him, that instruction, if the man had processed that instruction that Jesus gave him, he would not stretch his hand. Was there any hand to stretch? In the spirit realm, yes. But how do, what would have, immediately Jesus spoke, the power of God went forth into his life, into his body, into that hand to heal him, right? And make his hand whole. Now, if the man did not act on that instruction, the power of God was just going to remain in his body and nothing would have happened. His obedience to that instruction, stretch forth your hand, his immediate obedience to that instruction activated the power of God in his life. So when Jesus looked at him, the man did not process that instruction. So when Jesus spoke to him, stretch your hands, he just, and as soon as he did it, his hands were made whole. Don't process, try, fight for it. You know, it's not going to be easy. It takes practice. Don't process what God tells you in your head. Every time the enemy wants to transfer that word from your heart to your, air, to your head, take it back. You can fight for your attention. Fight to pay attention to faith. Fight to pay attention to Jesus. Fight to keep your gaze on the word. Fight for your focus. Fight to obey God instantly. Why? Because that's how you see the power of God at work in your life. So we are praying. And we've been praying for favor, right? What do you do with that favor? The Bible says, when you pray, whatsoever you, things you desire, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Mark 11, 23, 24, right? Okay, so I prayed for favor. I prayed for divine favor. And after my prayer, I know that God has answered because I believe in my heart that he has given me favor. Now, what do I do with what I have received? By faith, I begin to work and begin to make moves with what I have received. By faith, I'm supposed to do something with the favor that God has given me in the place of prayer. How do I do something with that favor? Apply for a job. Go out and ask for help. Go out and do something that you never did before. Perhaps you're asking for favor in the, maybe you have an interview or you're asking for divine favor. You want to start a business. You want to do something. When you finish praying, listen to where God will instruct you to, you know, move and move in that direction. Because when you move, the power of God moves. When you act, the power of God is activated. So you have, asked for, you have asked God for divine favor. He has given you favor. It's time to act and do something with it. You have asked for wisdom. He has given you wisdom. It's time to act and use the wisdom God has given you. You know, my driver was asking me, um, he said something, my staff was asking me something. He said, 
um, is a man supposed to have plenty money before he gets married? I said, no. Wisdom should tell you that you don't need plenty money. You don't need so much money to get married. What you need is to have an income. When you have an income, there is hope. When you have an income, there is a source of, you know that there's something is coming in from somewhere, no matter how little. Now it's up to you if you believe you can work or you can live within your means, within what you are getting every month or every week. But wisdom should tell you that you shouldn't take on more responsibilities if you don't have a job. Marriage is a responsibility. Why would you get married if you don't have a job? Except God tells you to proceed anyways. That's another thing entirely. But I believe wisdom is having an income, a stable income. It doesn't have to be so much. Just have a stable income before you take on more responsibilities. So God has given us wisdom. God has given us favor. We're praying for open doors. We're praying for breakthroughs. How do you activate the power of God when you have prayed for all of these things and God has given them to you? You start to act on it. Knock on doors. You pray that God open doors for me. You're not going to sit on your bed and doors will be open. Who is going to walk through them? Another person will walk through them. But when you've prayed for breakthrough, you've prayed for open doors, act on it. Get up. Knock on doors. Go to those offices. Speak to somebody. Market yourself. You have asked God that, Lord, this year you are taking my business. God has prophesied or someone has prophesied to your life that God is taking your business from this level to that level. Then you have some work to do. You have received that word in faith. But you still have work to do. You have a role to play. Your own work, your own role to play is to partner with God by faith. If you believe what God has spoken to you, if you believe that God has done what he said he has done in your life, you will act. You will act according to that word. You will do something. You will move accordingly. Faith without works is dead. So when you believe you have, God has done something, for instance, you are sick in your body. You need healing, right? Look at what Jesus told this guy. He didn't tell him to... Um, apply a balm every morning. He just told him, if, if stretch your hands, do something. I am willing to heal you. Do something. Do something. You're sick in your body. Maybe you're not working properly. Don't sit down there. The minute the word is spoken to you, get up. Attempt to get up. Don't process that instruction. Don't process what you're about to do. I'm not saying don't think. There's a place for that. There's a place to strategize. If it's a business, if it's something God is asking you to do. But don't switch to the flesh. When you're thinking, make sure you're still in the faith mode. Don't use your head when you're working with God. You want to see the power of God activated in your life this year. Don't use your head. Use your faith. That's when you will see the power of God in your life. So a sick, someone is sick and Christ has healed him or he was in a meeting and the laid hands were laid on him. He is meant to stand up immediately. He's meant to do something. I'm not saying there are cases where, of course, there are cases where the healing is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. There's some like that. But there are